It's finally time to retire my old 18 volt angle grinder, which I've been using and abusing for many years. I have here two of the latest 40 volt models from the Makita XGT range. Identical in every way, except one has a slide switch, the other a paddle switch. But more to the point, are they worth the upgrade? And how good is the X-Lock? To begin with, there's an obvious size difference between my old 18 volt and the 40 volt, but that is to be expected. The 40 volt, bigger motor, bigger power, and of course it has the new X-Lock system, which I'll get into in a minute, but the mechanism is obviously going to be bigger than the standard one. Now, you could argue that this isn't a fair test, because my old 18 volt is just that. It's old, it's five, six, maybe seven years old that I've had this machine for. And of course, it's 18 volt, not 40 volt. But it's just to prove that when your machines get old, they get tired, they get worn out, or if you're really unlucky enough to have them stolen, do I wanna upgrade? Well, for me, that's what I'm doing. The reason I've gone for the XGT is because I've slowly been converting all my 18 volt tools as they've been dying over time over to the 40 volt tools. You get better runtime, you get more power and you get other features like AWS, which has been built into some of the 18 volt stuff, but I just really like it. And there are more reasons than that. And I'll just get into those right now. On the old one, has a battery level meter. Now it just proves the age of this machine because this was designed in the age when the batteries didn't have the battery levels. Whereas the XGT one doesn't need that because like the newer 18 volt batteries, it also has a battery level meter. So they've done away with that because you don't need it. Now this one is only 115 millimeters for the size of the disc whereas this is 125. So again, that's a, a difference. However, I can fit 125 mil blades onto here, and I do so quite regularly. The other thing, of course, that they do match with is that they're both got a max speed of 8,500 RPM. But there's more going on with the new one compared to the old one. We have AWS. Absolutely fantastic, automatic vacuuming. There is a speed control dial just on the side there, but it ranges from 3000 RPM all the way up to 8500. But you have control because you can change the dial to whatever speed you want it to. Now the button for me could be a little bit bigger because if you're wearing gloves, that might be a bit difficult to move. But the feature is there. It gives you more options. It gives you more control over the job that you're working on. But for me, most importantly, the X-Lock system simply means no tools. Nothing to lose, nothing to get broken from that point of view. Because with the old 18 volt, you want to change your disc. You've got to push your button in the back, lock the spindle into position, so you've always got one finger on the back whilst you chuck your blade on, do it up. And then of course, you've got your spanner to tighten it up. And if you're on top of a roof, you're cutting tiles or, or whatever it is you need to do on a roof, you need to change your blade over. But now you need to cut a piece of concrete. So you need to change your blade over or it's a piece of timber, which is probably more like it. These have a habit of going from naught to infinity at a click of a finger. And it's gonna roll down your roof and it'll find that hedge or go down that drain before you've even know it. That's time lost when you could be working on the job. It's an extra hassle that none of us actually need. Whereas the X-Lock, you pull the lever and it releases the pins and making sure you get your blade in the right direction, literally locks on. And that's it, job done. More great benefits to this. Again, need to change your blade, do it. Seconds, off, new blade, on, job done. Fantastic. There's also a really good safety feature with this. 
if you've been doing lots and lots and lots of cutting with it, the blade invariably get very, very hot. Don't have to touch it. Discharge the blade, let it cool down before you pick it up. You don't have to worry about putting gloves on if you're not already wearing them. And it's just a good extra safety feature. These also have a quick release mechanism on the base for the guard. That simple. And it just locks into different positions. Whatever you like. The other thing with these is, is that it does actually come with another dust cover, which simply just slides on over the top and locks in. And the other good thing about these is that when you want to change your discs or put a new disc in, you don't have to take the cover off. There's enough room in there that it will just go in. But there's also another dust collector that you can get for this. Very similar to the 18 volt version, but this one does a very similar thing in that it is toolless. See, this is the, the one that fits the XGT. This is the old one, as you can tell, nicely used, nice and dirty. You see straight away on the bottom of there, there's an Allen key. Again, it's another attachment that requires yet another tool, which invariably would disappear into the ether of the toolbox, the van, whatever. This one, none of that. Exactly the same design, except obviously it's been designed for the X-Lock. So, place it on. Job done. So all you have to do then, just unscrew the cover like the old one. And drop your blade in. I was going to pick up a different blade just then, but I thought it doesn't really matter. And then you just screw it up like you would no do normally, and then you've got the, the plunging. The other thing I haven't mentioned yet, there's two machines on here, and they are both X-Lock. Now, they are identical in every single way. Except on here, you've got the slide switch, which we're all familiar with. Push it on to turn it on, clip it to turn it off. This one has a paddle switch, where it has a, you can't move it until you pull the, push the safety down, and then you can turn it on. Now, I can see why Makita have done this, and they've given us the option. Because for me, if I would be I mean, I'm not a metal worker, so I'm just assuming here, but I would imagine that if you're doing lots of cuts, or you're doing lots of grinding, or even if you're doing sanding, because you can get sanding attachments for these machines, you're gonna be holding the machine in this position. And having a, a switch, which you can just hold with your hand, and if you're doing, I know, cutting for up to 10 minutes, just release it, turn it off, put it down, move on to the next bit, pull the trigger, off you go, carry on. And you're fine, you're gonna be doing that all day long. But there is one thing that I don't like about this that I did discover. The majority of my work using angle grinders is for wall chasing. When you do wall chasing, you don't hold your angle grinder like this. You have it on its side, as you all know, so you can just run it up and down the wall. Now this is one thing I don't like because I did try this several times. This way around, super comfortable, love it. It just feels right. And if you want to, you can also hold the machine further up and still hold the trigger down. But if you turn it sideways, it ergonomically, it just, it doesn't feel right. My thumb has been forced around the top part of the handle there. Now, I know I've only got short, stubby hands, but then you can see my fist, it's wedged in between the body and the battery holder at the back. And also, if I'm doing a long chase, floor to ceiling, I can't hold that trigger in that position to do, to do all that work all the way up and down the wall. It's just impractical. The slide switch, 
turn it on like you would do normally. Hold it wherever you want to hold it. Just do the job all day long and not worry about letting go of the handle halfway for a cut. So for me, that's why I'm sticking to the slide switch and I won't be going for the paddle. But the paddle does have major benefits in its own right as a tool. One advantage that the 18 volt has over the new XGT X-Lock is that the X-Lock discs will fit like perfectly. No problem whatsoever. They sit in there as they're supposed to. Whereas the standard discs won't. There's nowhere for it to go. Obviously, it's a different shape. Now, whether the X-Lock discs are better than the standard discs, I'll let you tell me about that in the comments below. Other features with these discs is the soft start and auto brake. So I just put a battery into each of these. I'm gonna leave the discs off for safety reasons, just for the moment. So I'm gonna start off with the 18 volt. Instant power, zero to eight and a half thousand RPM, just like that, and a very, very slow wind down. In comparison to the XGT, you can hear that it takes almost a second for it to spin up the full speed but it's got a break on it, which reduces the disc down to zero in a matter of moments, adding to the safety of the machine. So I guess it's time now to use these in anger, find myself a concrete block, get some metal, and just see what it's really made of. So as you can see, I fitted the same disc into both of these machines, but obviously because this one is only designed for the 115 millimeters, it is very, very tight. But what I wanted to demonstrate here was the difference in startup speed and shutdown. So here we go. And just to play it fair, I'm going to swap them over to do them again. definite improvement in technology. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to swap the blade very quickly to the standing disc. Now unfortunately this is too big to actually fit in the 18 volt but for the purposes of the XGT here I just want to show how far I can push it before the safety will kick in on both the high speed on number five and the low on number one. Whilst well, just taking the rather nasty surface rust off in this sheet of metal. Let's give it a go. So that's actually forced my workbench back. But we're in there, going to teach me for using rubbish wheels. Let's try that one again on speed one. There we go. There we go. And then it just cuts in. Let's try it again. And there we go. Very sudden stop, but it means that you're going to be safe. Let's try it on speed five. And you can just see, and you can see just how deep that's actually cut before it, the safety cut in. But as an actual machine, that will just take all this rust off. So 
very, very powerful. As you can see, this is a piece of C16 timber and I've chucked in a few screws and some nails. Some of the more astute of you would have picked up earlier on that how I was holding the handle. I was holding it like that, which was actually incorrect because really I should have been holding it like that. But there was a good reason for that, and that's because I'm so used to using these guards from Makita that fit their machines. They were only fit on one way. So unless you're left-handed, or you prefer to hold them like this, and then put the handle in the side, then that's the wrong way around. It certainly is for me anyway, because I prefer to do it the other way around, because I'm right-handed. I prefer to hold the machine with my right hand, and guide my left. But anyway, let's give it a try. I don't think there's much I have to say there. The tools spoke for themselves. So for me, now that that machine is getting old, starting to wear out, and it was definitely proven by the concrete block because it really struggled 
to do that cut. I'm really glad that I've now changed up or upgraded to the XGT range. It's gonna make my life, and hopefully yours, if you go down the same route, a lot easier. So here's a good tip for you. When you put, when you fit these, not only do you obviously hold the, the main guard area, you need to put your thumb on the ring at the back to make sure that it pushes all the way on and it goes on straight. So I'll just demonstrate that again. So you're pushing it on and you see it's not quite going, not quite getting on there. So just a little push with your thumb and on it goes. And then it should, Just rotate and it will lock in to one of its multiple points that it has. <laughs>